I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, born and raised. Growing up, I had a beautiful childhood. My mom worked from five to five. She was an immigrant. She became a citizen, worked for the city of Phoenix. Uh, my dad was a truck driver, and my dad was never home. When he was around, he was very loving. But my dad was very, I'm the man of the house. You do what I say. And he expected me as a female to be the one that stayed home, no sports, clean the house. But I had three brothers. And being raised with all boys, I was such a tomboy <laughs> where I wanted to do everything that they were doing. My brothers would be at wrestling practice, and I'd be like, hey, can I join? Like, I just wanted to get out. And then I'll go, and my brothers would be like, like, you're a girl, you shouldn't be here. Because it, was, it wasn't known. For a female to be in the sport, in any combat sport, it wasn't known. At a young age, just being on the mat, watching them, I was learning. But I wasn't allowed to do anything. I didn't understand that. Why can't I do sports? Because I said so. That was their answer. Porque yo dije que no. My brother, Jose, was the leader of all of us. My brothers never really accepted me in between them. But, you know, Jose always treated me with love. So we were really close. Jose got diagnosed with cancer. I was really young. I was just not even a teenager. I was still a kid. Jose was like the tree trunk of the family. You know, there's, he was what kept us together. And when he passed away, it's like we, we all just fell apart. My way of coping with things was I started hanging around with the wrong crowd. I remember being in sixth grade and ditching school and abusing drugs and stuff. I was partying a lot, drinking a lot. With the things that I was doing, I could have died 110%. My dad kicked me out right before I turned 17. When my dad kicked me out, my entire family disowned me. And growing up and my dad telling me, there's no friends, there's no this, there's only family, there's us. And having them disown me the way they did, it crushed me. My mom was the only one that stayed in touch. There wasn't a day that I didn't hear from her. She made sure like, hey, you're still loved, you're not alone. Because I felt very alone. And um, she was there for me. You know, she was, she was everything I needed at the time. My mom came to me one time, and she was just crying. She was like, Jose was fighting for his life, and you're killing your life. I was settling for average. That's when I really started changing my life around. I always wanted to wrestle. You know, I would tell myself, I'm going to be in the UFC. Did I believe it? No. <laughs> but I would tell myself that. <laughs> I've always been someone that, if you tell me not to do something, I'm going to go do it. I know that's why me and my dad just never got along for that reason. You know, you can't wrestle. Oh, yeah, watch me go jump in that mat. Yep. That was better. This side, you know? I, I was running straight, but he wants to stand. Angle. My mom, for a while, was having issues with her throat. She was with me one day at the gym. She wanted to go see me train. I didn't tell her, but she was looking very skinny. She wasn't eating. And I remember being like, Mom, that's not normal. Can I take you to the hospital? And they said, hey, we're going to do uh, some scans on you. We need you to lay down, because she was sitting up. They laid her down, and she started suffocating. She couldn't breathe. And then she fell into a coma. After that, I just never left her side. Finally, early August, they tell us 
she has thyroid cancer. And they pretty much told me, like, there's no chance for her. August 28th of 2015, her heart just stopped. <laughs> After my mom passed away, life was still hard, very hard. I stopped training and fighting for about a year. Because for me, it was like the person that supported me the most and that believed in me more than I believed in myself. I don't have that no more. And I remember when Jose passed away, I had this regret in me because I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to see what was going on. And to this day, that just haunts me. I got tattoos of Jose and my mom. Just seeing them whenever I want is a reminder, you know, that I already went through the worst part of my life. Training, fighting helped me out so much. September of 2017, I made my debut for Invicta. Arizona's Tracy Cortez ready to put on the pressure. I lost. I lost my, my, my pro debut, <laughs> and I should have won. But that loss made me realize, OK, if I'm going to do this, I have to give it my all. I can't half-ass it. Coming out aggressive early in round number two. Cortez is definitely showing that fighting spirit. Tracy! Tracy Cortez getting the nod. Who I was, very insecure. I didn't even believe in myself, if I was being honest. Hush! One more. And if it weren't for the people around me guiding me and helping me and just digging it in my brain, like, you are an amazing athlete. I don't think I'll be where I am right now. I've been working with Tracy from her first pro fight till till today. Don't stay there or turn the corner. That's what I want you guys getting on is over here, and we're coming up on that back right there. Tracy's fighting for herself, but this is a continuation of her brother's legacy, of her mother. I mean, Tracy's fighting with ghosts on the inside. That that was it. That he looked like, whoa. That, that he should have felt lighter that time. Yeah. Tracy was always tough. But she's come so far from, you know, when I met her till now, it just, it, it's unreal. I mean, it's world class now. She's as talented as they come. She's as athletic as they come. She's as driven as they come. She can do anything. The title is hers. She just doesn't have it yet. One day, my coach called me and said, hey, Tracy, you're on the Contender Series. While going through life, I was still trying to get this done. Like, all right, this is my shot. 25-year-old Tracy Cortez. She is chasing a UFC dream, not only for herself, but for her late brother, Jose, and her mom. My sympathy for her, which can't allow that to enter her mind space too much, otherwise she might be too emotional, and she's gonna lose the fight. I went in there, and everyone thought I was gonna lose. When they first walked out, they started to square off. You know, you got this girl that looks like you want to own Jay Check, and she starts lighting Tracy Cortez up. Oh, hard left. And I'm like, oh, God, she's going to walk over this girl. This is going to be a really one-sided fight. And uh, I, I proved everybody wrong. I was right, but with the wrong person. It was a one-sided fight the other way. Nice work by Cortez. Cortez just dominating. Oh, absolutely. Excellent performance by Cortez. Tracy, come on over here. You're in. Tracy Cortez, congrats. I kind of just, oh, my God. And you see me, I was just like, oh, my God. And I just go. <laughs> I know your mom, Gloria, never got to watch you have a professional fight. What's it feel like to know how proud she is of you right now? <laughs> That's why I do what I do. I just want to make my mom and my brother proud, you know? I was like, this is a new chapter. Like, this is a new journey. Things are only going to move up from here. Welcome back, Tracy Cortez. She's certainly a bright prospect that came off of Dana White's Contender Series. She's done very well in the octagon. She's undefeated so far. Cortez on top, landing heavy shots. I think the struggle behind a fighter really defines who we are, and no one has had my struggle. But everything happens for a reason. Regardless of what life throws at us, 
We can get through anything.